make a living being a professional bowler. Let's do the math. Take me to Candyland. Ooh, take me to Candyland. Sweeter than sugar, you're doing that dancey dance. Can you make a living being a professional bowler? That's the question we all want to know. Or how they do it. How professional bowlers are making a living, surviving, just doing what they love. Because for a lot of bowlers, that's really the goal. You just want to be able to bowl and live a financially stable, free life, right? We all want that. So let's do the math. Let's see what you can make. And another thing to note is that a lot of professional bowlers have multiple streams of income. So we're gonna go over bowling, uh, professional bowling, as well as local tournaments, side action at local tournaments, sponsors, YouTube or social media, merch. Um, that's kind of the main bowling related incomes I can think of. So let's begin. I'm going to begin, I have this spreadsheet here. Here, I guess it'll be. As you can see, for a regular PWBA tournament, you got entry fee, hotel, travel, and meals. And that's a average weekly cost for the girls on tour, as well as the guys. I mean, a lot of this can be transfer to the or to the PBA tour as well. Let's look. I have the PWBA tour schedule for 2022 here and it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve tournaments. And of course a lot of these things can fluctuate like travel for the last three tournaments it doesn't need to be included because it's all technically one big tournament because they're all in Dallas at USA Bowl. The hotel fees would be longer for that one and the travel would be uh, less money. But, so we're gonna say there's... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll say there's nine events that will multiply these costs by. Let's look up PWBA entry fee. Keep in mind, there's also a membership fee. So if you're rolling all these events, you have to be a member. And so when you have a PWBA membership, you get a $100 entry fee discount on standard events as well as $50 discounts on regional events. So regional events are another way to potentially generate income. But I'm just gonna focus on the national stops. Membership for 2022 actually won't be available until the 12th. But I believe in the past it was three hundred or four hundred dollars. A PWBA membership costs three hundred dollars. This was for the 2019 season, so it might be increased. I don't know. We'll put membership fee under these costs as three hundred dollars, and then the entry fee for. The uh, national event was about $300 then too. And then a hotel, you gotta think, I don't know, if you don't have a roommate, $125 by three or four nights that you'd need to stay. So we'll say four nights. That's $500 alone. Okay. okay. And then travel, I don't know what everybody's situation is, whether you need to fly or drive to a tournament. If you drive, I'm sure you'd save a lot of money. Again, driving with a partner, a potential roommate, these costs can be reduced. So this is just the higher end. Just, I don't know, I'm trying to take into account a lot of things. So let's say travel is, I don't know, $300 for the tournament, including gas, driving to and from the bowling alley, etc. And then meals will say $40 a day for four days. $160. So let's total these up. Total for one event, you're looking at about $1,500. $1,560. We said we'd look at about 10 events. The total for 10 events would be $1,560 times 10. About $15,600 for a season. Okay. Okay, and here's a screenshot of what I just did on Excel for you to see how I came up with that. 
Okay, so we're looking at about $1,560. Now let's look at the fun part, earnings. How much you can do? Well, PWBA earnings. And we're going to assume that this bowler has a pretty good season. They finish first, fifth, sixth, tenth, first, fortieth, twentieth, third, thirty-second, and twentieth. So there's a few times they had a bigger prize fund or prize winning, and then other times they didn't cash at all, right? We found a prize fund from the 2021 PWBA Reno Classic, and I'm going to insert that here. The total prize fund was about $50,000. The champion won $10,000. So we're going to use $10,000 as the first place prize. This girl won two titles in one year. Good job. I'm just going to insert uh, what they'd win in this tournament for the other places. So as you can see, they won about $32,000 for their placements, which that's a pretty good season, if you ask me. And so they just about doubled their money, it's not including what they'd win from their sponsors or anything like that. So we'll put in a few sample sponsorship fees. So now I'm gonna put some other earnings, separate earnings, from the sponsors or so what I did now is incorporated a few potential earnings from sponsors. Not that these are accurate numbers at all. I have no idea what these professional bowlers are making. But from what I've heard from the grapevine, through the grapevine I guess, these are potential incentives slash pay that they could be earning. For example, a ball company maybe paid you $500 a month if you are a pro staff, and then this person made three TV shows in a year, so that's $200 per TV show. And then for an accessory company, jersey company, and shoe company, I did the same thing, providing them $200 per TV show appearance, which equaled about $600 per company and $6,600 for the ball company. So that's an extra $8,400 that they could make in a year with a decent season, right? Then you have to think of other streams of income. So let's just do other income and maybe YouTube. As a professional bowler, YouTube is a great idea because people want to see behind the scenes and just get to know what a real day in the life is like. So let's say YouTube, they made $800 a month for 12 months. What else? And then side tournaments. So obviously there are separate fees inside tournaments as well and you have to take that out of your earnings. But let's say they made $400 um, so 10 weeks out of the year, they're competing on tour, so that leaves 42 weeks in the year. Say they compete 20 weeks in a year, or 25 weeks. A lot of professional bowlers bowl a lot of side action, or side tournaments, including side action. So $400 is actually a really low number. We'll say they made $700 in side tournaments for 25 weeks of the year. That's another $17,500. That's, again, an example of a better season, but so between YouTube and side tournaments, that's another $27,000 a year, possibly. So let's add up all these earnings we've summarized. Now to add these up, we're going to do the sum of... So we got the 31000 they won on tour, minus the 15000 they spent to bowl on tour, plus incentives for companies, plus other earnings of side tournaments and YouTube as an example. So starting from the top, those were the fees for the tournaments, the earnings for the tournaments, an example of incentives for companies, and then other income. 
so we totaled 51,000 for the year, a little bit over. And then, of course, I'm gonna make that a lot bigger. And then, of course, when you deduct taxes and whatnot, it'd be a little less. I only included two possible streams of income besides actually bowling, which was due to all your other tournaments are actually bowling. There's a lot of other ways people can make money. Maybe that's selling jerseys, designing personal jerseys and getting profit from other people buying them, or selling merch, or, you know, there's a lot of other options. And some people, I think most people actually that are professional bowlers, also have a part-time job on the side. So if that's another, I don't know, 20,000 a year, you're up to 70,000. And depending on where you live in the States, I live in Wichita, so that is a decent income. I, you can definitely survive on that pretty comfortably here, depending on your spending habits, of course. And speaking of spending, I also didn't include costs for buying bowling balls, drilling bowling balls, jerseys, shoes, because a lot of professional bowlers are provided with those from their sponsors. So, let me know what you think. Let me know if I left anything out. I think it's very possible to make a living as a professional bowler if you're successful and dedicated to practice and getting better, of course. But let me know what you think. Would you do it? Are you going to do it? Let me know.